to the first OE, uh, CCC OER webinar for 2020, so first of the decade and first of the year, quite exciting. Um, today's topic is going to be attributions, authoring, and platforms. What we'll be looking at today is we'll do a, a quick round of introductions. We'll talk a little bit about uh, CCC OER, and then we'll have a introduction to attributions, best practices, and so on. And then we'll have uh, two faculty share their experiences developing OER within two different platforms. We'll look at both, both Pressbooks and LibreText. We'll also have some time for Q&A, and we'll have a few announcements of upcoming events. So let's start with the, oh, sorry. The speakers we have for today. Um, we have uh, Jenren Wetzler from Creative Commons, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves a little bit. So Jenren. Okay, hi, can everyone see and hear me? Hopefully. Yep. Loud and clear. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm really delighted to be here and um, I'm just going to take a minute to share my screen and give a quick um, overview. Let's see. So I guess as a... Stop. Do you want me to stop sharing? Um, we'll do the actual presentations in a bit. Is this just a quick... Uh, oh, okay. Intro? Then that's all I have to share right now. Thanks okay. so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. Uh, Dave Dillon from Grossmont College. Do you want to say a quick hello? Hello, this is Dave. I'm coming from Grossmont College in San Diego. I'm a counselor and professor. Excellent. Thank you. And Athena? You want to do a quick intro of yourself? I think you may be muted. There you, there, we had it. There you go. Yeah. Hi, I'm a professor at uh, English at City College of San Francisco. My name is Athena Kashyap, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. And we will hear more from, um, from the presenters in just a little bit, but I did want to go through a little bit about CCC OER, so the Community Consolid College Consortium for OER. Um, our mission is to expand awareness and access to high-quality OER. And we do this by supporting faculty choice and development of resources. We foster regional OER advocacy, and this is all about helping to improve student success. So that is our mission, and these webinars um, are part of that. Uh, CCC OER has members in 16 states, and I, and if you, well, and you can see them all here. <laughs> And I also wanted to point out uh, two new members that we're very excited to have on board. We have Trinity Valley Community College in Texas and Butler Community College in Kansas. So if anyone's on the call from those two colleges, if you want to say a quick hello. And if not, I should just mention just as an aside, because I was really excited to see uh, Butler Community College on the list. I just took their accessibility course, and it was fabulous. So um, feeling really awesome to have both of these colleges as part of our membership. Uh, last announcement then before we get started. So I hope y'all are aware um, that we have Open Ed Week coming up in about two weeks. So that is super exciting. Um, there's going to be a lot of really amazing webinars if you have attended in the past. Uh, the, the sheer number of really great opportunities um, has been amazing, and so we're looking forward to much the same thing this year. If you'd like to um, participate, and we highly encourage you to submit some projects or um, webinars or share what you're doing, there's a few links here that you can use um, so that you can be part of the event. We have some really great things coming up from uh, CCC OER, Open Oregon, California. Um, different members are putting together uh, some really cool events, and so if you want to get yours on the list as well, please do submit your proposals. Uh, something to look forward to is uh, Liz Yada from CCC OER will be posting daily digests of what's to come. Um, and that'll just help us, I, I think, focus on what, what might be uh, events to attend. Oftentimes, there's just so many great things, it can be easy to, to miss out a few. But uh, definitely take a look, and um, I hope you have a wonderful Open Ed Week. 
All right. Um, cool. So let's move ahead and generate. I'm going to stop sharing and hopefully you can share. I got many windows open. So try to share now. Let's see if that works. Fabulous, thank you. And um, so as we start our first presentation, Jenner, I'm gonna let you sit, share your screen and um, take over from here. I just wanted to let folks know that I will be managing the chat. So if you have questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat and I'll keep track of them. And then at the end of Jenner's presentation, I will pose those questions so we can all consolidate at the end. So they will be answered um, and I will keep track of them. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, take it away. All right, thanks so much. And let me try sharing one more time. All right. Perfect, so, yeah, so we can see your, your screen and the window. Okay, and hopefully, does that, now we see your desktop. Okay, sorry about that. One second. All right, one more try. Oops. I'm so sorry about this. It, of course, always works when you practice and then disappears when you need it. So I should be able to get this in two seconds. Not a problem. Okay. All right, hopefully everyone can see this now. We, we can, we can see your desktop and the window um, for the slide. Okay, how about now? That's perfect, fabulous. Cool. All right, well, thank you so much for your patience. And um, I am, as I said before, I'm really delighted to be here. It's, um, it's great to um, have the chance to present with, with other folks that I really respect. And also, I just wanted to give a shout out to the, the people I saw in the audience, uh, many of whom who have taken the CC certificate course already. So many people um, here, including um, Susan is um, more of an expert in this than um, than I think you know we, we might expect. So I, I invite you all to chime in to this discussion and um, and presentation. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is give a really quick overview of our CC licenses um, for people who are not familiar with them, and then get right into some recommended practices for attribution. And um, given our kind of short time right now. Um, I, if there are things that don't make sense, please, please feel free to um, ask questions in the chat space or um, you can follow up with me afterward. I put my, my email address here and I'm, I'm always delighted to, um, to connect after webinars like this. Okay, so um, really quickly, uh, Creative Commons licenses, for those of you who are um, less familiar, are um, licenses that exist within the realm of copyright. And you likely know copyright is a form of intellectual property um, law that grants creators um, permissions as soon as they create an original work and fix it in a tangible medium. So um, copyright was kind of a law built to um, incentivize creators during the year of the printing press, but obviously now we have um, different circumstances, much more freedom for um, copying and, and sharing with the internet. So Creative Commons licenses actually um, enable creators to offer more permissions um, than traditional copyright and um, kind of adapt to the flexibility that we have online today. So they are still um, legal um, tools to better help creators. Um, so as you see here, the copy, the CC licenses have a number of different icons, but really there are four elements to keep track of. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these four elements and how they can combine. 
Um, but again, happy to, to follow up with more information if anyone's curious um, following this webinar. So the first um, icon that you see is the, the little human in the circle. That's the CC BY icon. And that basically means that um, the creator um, deserves recognition for their work. So all of our licenses have that, um, that commonality. All, um, copy, all Creative Commons licenses require the um, attribution. And then you see the little icon with the, the kind of round arrow, and that is our share alike icon. So share alike means that all derivative or kind of adapted works from an original work must be shared with the same or analogous license in the future. So you, as a, um, as a user of one piece of CC licensed work, if you try to um, impose additional restrictions on your work that is based on someone else's CC licensed work with a share alike license, then you would be um, infringing on their, um, their permissions. All right, then we have the non-commercial icon. So that's the little icon with the dollar sign and the slash through it. And that, that basically, it means that um, permission for commercial usage rights are withheld. So if I were to use a work and um, intentionally make profit from it when it had the non-commercial icon attached, I would be kind of infringing on those, those rights. Um, the interesting thing I will note with non-commercial is that it really depends on the usage rather than the organization or individual using that work. So you could have a nonprofit um, trying to make money from a, an NC licensed work, and that would not be okay. But if you had a for-profit organization using NC licensed work for, say, um, an internal staff gallery walk or um, something that's non-commercial in, in its purpose, then that would be fine. Okay, then we have the no derivatives license and that's the license with um, the little icon with the, the equal sign. So no derivatives mean the work can be shared, but only if the work remains unchanged. So hypothetically, if I took a, um, a work that had the no derivatives license and made adaptations to it, I could do so for myself, but as soon as I share that with other people, then I've, um, I've gone against the license. So these are the four main elements of the licenses, and all the licenses, as I mentioned, include the CC BY or attribution um, element, but otherwise they can be mixed together in different ways based on their permissions afforded. And beyond that commonality um, of the BY license, there are, um, I guess the, the main things to think about are whether or not um, the work can be used for commercial purposes or um, the terms by which a downstream user could use a work for adaptation. And then um, we have the works kind of listed from least restrictive to most restrictive. So CC licensed works um, exist kind of like in between the realm of um, the public domain and then all rights reserve copyright. We have two um, tools for public domain dedications, which um, users or authors can, um, can use to tell, tell people that their work is dedicated to that realm of um, you know, our, our human um, creativity and intellect that exists outside the restrictions of copyright. And those are um, those two kind of icons at the top, the C with the, the slash through it or the zero. Um, so those are dedications or tools rather than copyright licenses. Um, and then we have all rights reserve copyright at the, the very bottom, which is the most restrictive um, way to, to share work. The CC licenses, um, again, kind of mix the different permissions afforded. They exist within that spectrum. Um, and so you see them listed in light green, um, all the way down to yellow. And I'm happy to chat about it more, but I think for, for right now, we will just um, move on to the two main things that I want you to, um, to take away with you from this, this presentation. So in terms of attribution, if nothing else, just remember these two links, or you can click on them now and save them in your browser. 
Um, the first link is to our, um, our CC license chooser. And this chooser helps you determine the best license to suit your needs. So as a creator, you can run through the chooser, answer a couple of questions, and then um, the chooser helps you determine which of the six licenses would best um, support your, your permissions that you want to afford. Um, and then the second link is a link to our best practices page, which um, rather than just looking at your work as a creator, it looks at how to best attribute other works that you end up using together for, um, for reuse or your own kind of um, new original work. So let's just go ahead and we'll click on the first link and hopefully you can see the license chooser on my screen. Okay, great. So this is um, this is really simple. I will note that we're um, we're going to be updating this chooser soon. So if you click on this in the future and don't see um, this kind of layout, don't worry. It's um, it's probably going to work even better. So what you see in the first box is just a simple question: Do you want your your work to um, be adapted? Um, do you want to allow adaptations of your work to be shared. So you could say, you know, I have a, um, a poster that I want to upload online. I would like my, um, my poster to be adapted. Um, or you could say, nope, I don't. And that would change your, your license. You see in the next box. Or you could say something in between. You could say, do I want um, people to be able to share their adaptations of my poster, making completely different posters? Um, yes, but as long as other people don't um, add additional restrictions onto um, their licensed works. So those questions, um, or that one question yields different licenses. And then the second question is, allow commercial uses of your work? Do I want to? Mm, sure. Um, or I could say no, and that would also change the license. So depending on what works best for you, um, you select the answer, the yes, no, or maybe answer. And then you can scroll down and see um, the icons that reflect the license if you're choosing. So in this case, we ended up with attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 international. Um, and then the best way to use this, so this is where we get into attribution, is to literally just copy and paste the icon right here, the text and the link to the original, to the license, and post that on your work. You can also, if you're working on a web page, um, copy and paste this code. So this is a kind of quick and dirty way of um, making sure you provide adequate um, information for attribution. Ideally, you would also put a, a title on your work and a link to yourself as the author of the work and, and so on, but this is essentially all you, you need. Okay, so then we'll click on the second link, and this is our page for um, best practices for attribution. I'm gonna scroll through it because I'm realizing that we're running a little short on time. What you see here are examples of how to attribute um, an original work and then how to attribute works that are based on that original work but makes a slight tweaks. So the key elements here that um, I wanna leave you with are tassel. You wanna make sure that you have the title, author, source, and license outlined in your attribution. So whether you are um, sharing an original work in kind of a collection or an um, unadapted form of um, reuse, or if you are remixing it into creating you know, a brand new work that's unidentifiable to the, the original, you want to make sure to kind of honor the original author and their permissions um, of the original work so that downstream users can best um, abide by those permissions and also recognize the, the original author, or I should say creator. Um, so hopefully that, um, that makes sense. There's so much more that we can get into, and I know a number of folks in the, the webinar likely can um, chime in with some additional um, recommendations. We can talk if there's time about um, compatibility and um, how to best um, honor different attributions um, beyond this. But for right now, I think this is, this is the key thing that I want you to, to take away from this webinar. These two, um, these two sites and also TASL.
title, author, source, license. Okay, I'm going to see if I can stop sharing right now. And take a look at the chat space. Yeah, there was actually one of the um, questions that was asked um, by Valerie is, how does fair use tie into all of this? That's a good question. So um, there are some um, exceptions and limitations to copyright. Um, fair use is one of those. So fair use is um, common in the US and it is, um, it is one of the exceptions that says, even if, um, even if a work exists within, um, it is restricted by copyright, people have the right to use that work given um, their specific circumstances. So there's, in the US, there's a four factor test that judges will um, use to determine um, if fair use applies. I know in, in other, I think Commonwealth countries, predominantly Commonwealth countries, um, there is something similar called fair dealing. Um, but these, these are two um, exceptions to copyright. They exist outside the restrictions of copyright. And, um, and then Una posted the, the TASEL acronym. And I know one of the questions I get very often from faculty is, how is attribution different from citations? A great question. So um, attribution is a way to recognize the, um, the original creator. I think citations are very similar, but those are more for scholarly works that are um, listing the sources used to generate the works. So um, I, can, I can come up with a, a really great website that, um, that distinguishes them a little bit um, after this. But I think the, the main thing to keep in mind is um, you can have like one, one um, essay, for example, that has citations, but then also recognizes or attributes the original work of, um, from other creators that, that you drew from. Oh, attribution. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Were there other questions? I, I didn't see any in the chat, um, but I just want to give folks a chance to ask other questions. And if we have time at the end, I, I would love to come back to the remixing um, discussion because I saw I, I took a sneak peek. You have a very nice slide coming up. So if we have time, <laughs> we'll come back to it. <laughs> All right. Um, and yeah, Valerie shared some nice links in the chat for for attributions. And cool. All right. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate this, um, this discussion of, of how attributions work. And what we're going to be moving on to next are two examples of um, a faculty work that were done in different platforms, kind of looking at the, the faculty experience of working with the licenses um, and focus specifically on the kind of nuts and bolts of, of each platform. So Dave, uh, thank you. You are up. Okay, you can see my screen and hopefully not my desktop. Are we good? Yep. And you can hear okay. me too. So I think we're rolling. Yeah. Okay, uh, hello and good afternoon. I think for most, if not all of you, I'm Dave Dillon. I'm, I'm counseling faculty and a professor um, at Grossmont College in sunny, um, probably warmer than where most of you are, but um, feeling a bit cold to us uh, spoiled San Diegans. Um, I uh, curated, I think is the best word, um, curated, uh, co-authored, and edited uh, three college success OER um, uh, covering study skills, time management, career decision making. Um, and the main one, I'm, I'm humbled and proud to say that it has been adopted now in about 25, 26 uh, colleges and universities all over the United States um, and now in Canada. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased that um, it was not just something that I was able to put together from my own classroom um, that addressed textbook affordability and had open licensing and pedagogy, but also um, there are other people that, that have found value and quality uh, with the work. And so um, I, am, I am right now wishing that I had put this on a slide, um, and, and that's partially because I'm seeing folks on the, in the participant list that um, 
that I, that I know and am thankful for their contributions um, to the work. And so, um, as, as Suzanne was saying, this, this is a remix. Um, and so I want to recognize and, and give proper attribution to the authors who previously openly licensed their work to allow me to be able to um, put this together. And so that's Elise Lamoureau and Phyllis Nasilla at Lane Community College. Um, and special shout out to, to Amy Hoffer from Open Oregon. Um, your mentorship was um, incredibly valued to me. I'm, I'm very thankful. Um, also to Thomas Priester from SUNY um, and Linda Bruce and Lumen Learning. Um, they were the authors and um, uh, open licensors and editors um, of the previous works. Um, and then also special shout out to Alexis Clifton um, from the SUNY system. Um, what I wanted to originally try to accomplish was something that had the least restrictive license. So I was trying to find content that was all CC BY. Um, one of the works that I found that I felt like I just couldn't do without happened to be a CC BY uh, non-commercial license. And Alexis was um, willing and interested in helping facilitate and ask uh, that that ultimately resulted in a previous work being relicensed as CC BY, so less restrictive, and that made uh, it really easy for me to put all the content into CC BY, um, the, the category of CC BY, which then made it really simple for downstream users to to take that work and not have confusion um, over different licenses. Um, I used the Pressbooks platform um, and was, was supported by the Pressbooks team and the Rebus community team. And I'd like to show you a little bit about how attributions um, work inside of Pressbooks. Um, I'm also knowledgeable that many of the folks in, that are participating know more <laughs> than I do. So um, feel free to jump in and if you have things to, to correct or um, maybe better examples than I do, I'm happy to, to hear from you. Um, I'm reiterating Genren's um, example of TASSEL. This is a, an easy acronym to remember and just a nice um, best practice. If, if you're including the title, the author, the source, and the license, um, and, and you're able to link the source and link the license, um, you're, you're doing the right thing. We're doing right by our, our colleagues by properly attributing. And when there's no commercial gain, um, I think this is kind of the least that we can do to ensure that, that we're giving proper attribution. Um, so this is an example uh, of what the viewer in Pressbooks would see for one of the simple attributions. Um, and as Jenren was mentioning, um, the licenses and attributions uh, kind of go hand in hand. Um, so depending on the license, that, that will um, kind of dictate some of, of what is required or, or best practice with the attribution. Um, so this is, this is previously shared content. It came from Foundations of Academic Success, Words of Wisdom, that's the title, um, edited by Thomas Priester. I'm not entirely sure that's necessary, but I thought that was the best practice. Um, this particular essay was authored by Kristen Murek. Um, she is the author, so T title, A author, uh, S source, that's the um, link to the source um, of the original SUNY work, and then L license uh, CC BY. And then now I'm going to call your attention to this bottom left area. Um, this probably looks redundant, but what I want to point out here is that this is a very easy way to put the attribution information into the chapter into Pressbooks, and I'll show you that on the next slide. What I kind of did here, I think from, from what I can understand was a bit above and beyond. Um, I, I wouldn't say that everyone has to do this, but I'll show you where I think it, it can really be helpful, especially for downstream users um, later. So this is on the uh, administrative side of Pressbooks. This is not something that the viewer would see. But with the, um, with the administrative um, access, uh, you can go into a chapter metadata page. And I really only filled out two of these um, 
these boxes. So I filled out the author and then I filled out the chapter copyright license. That's a drop down menu that I'll show you on the next slide. If I go back, just by putting those two, two fields in, this is the result. So uh, the, the meaning of that is that that was very, very simple um, to put together. And then to see what the drop down menu looks like, these are the options. So once you've figured out um, what license you're using, either for your entire OER work or for your chapter or unit or, or part level, um, you can choose which license is appropriate and put that in there and then Pressbooks will do the rest and, and pop that at the bottom of the chat. You can do the same thing for the entire book. Um, so if, if everything was, was clean and you had the, the consistent um, license, there's another area where you can put in the information for the entire book and that will show on the licensing page at the beginning of the OER. Um, here's a bit more complicated um, attribution. Again, this is what the user would see. Um, so previously licensed content, um, we have the title, we have the author, we have two sources. Um, that's because I took the original author's work from two different areas and combined them um, and then kind of retitled the chapter. And that information I put here in the adaptions. And this is not uh, a requirement for attributions, but I, I encourage you to think about um, this for two reasons. One, it was really helpful for me from a record keeping standpoint, because if I was either going to, uh, to reuse or remix something verbatim, that was one area. In other cases like this one, I may have made some slight edits um, based on what I was trying to, to put together or for consistency to work together better with other uh, works that were being remixed. Um, and, and I wanted to keep track of that. So I thought a good place to put that was right with the at attributions and licensing and that's why that's in there. Um, some folks are putting that information in the version history. Um, it, it doesn't always, it's not always this detailed in there. So, so I actually have it in both places. Um, I also find that is extremely helpful for downstream users because if anyone was gonna go back and take a look at what um, Phyllis Nasilla had put together and they were comparing and I didn't have that adaption information in there, it could be very confusing to try to figure out, okay, what did Dave change? Why, why does this not look exactly the same as what Phyllis had put together? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, going further, uh, we have the title of a multimedia video. Uh, the author in this case is Ted, uh, ted.com. We have the location um, or the, the source and the license. And to be honest with you, I, I'm not terribly pleased with um, this gap here, but that's because of the spacing um, with this really long source. Um, so I think Pressbooks will eventually find a better way to present that. It, it is what it is at this moment. And then two images at the bottom. So um, title, again, author, um, source. The source happens to be where the title is. So you're not seeing it separate. It's, it's hyperlinked. So the title and the source are showing together um, and then licensed there at the end. Okay. Um, challenging question for the group. Uh, is this a proper attribution? And what I would like you to do is spend 30 seconds um, answering that in the chat, but don't press return yet. Um, just have your answer typed, but, but not, uh, don't press return. I'll wait 20 seconds. Hopefully we can all send it together just so you're not seeing and being influenced what other people um, have written. 10 more seconds on this. Okay, three, two, one, go ahead and press enter. And Suzanne, if you could um, let me know if anything is being populated in the chat. Yep, lots is coming through, more than I could read. Um, you, don't, and you definitely don't have to read them individually, but if you could give me a kind of summary of 
Yeah, the, the, the most answer. common answer is um, there's no title link or, or no source. Um, yeah, that's the most common answer. Okay, so you're right on. The, the title is College Success in this case. Um, I know that that may not have been um, intuitive. You're absolutely right though that the source is missing. And, and I, I'm sharing this example because this was a real, real lifetime um, thing that happened. What I was attempting to accomplish was to properly attribute um, this source and content. And when I went to the Lumen source, um, I copied and pasted what was in there for the attribution. And so lo and behold, what I realized, um, and, and it seems very logical now, but really wasn't at the time, um, sometimes original content that is first published may not include a source link uh, or, or even a source because it would be linking to itself. And so sometimes that is a, a practice that's done and sometimes it's not. And um, I think I was focusing on a hundred different things at the time and didn't really realize that it was missing that. So shout out to David Wiley who um, had kind of taken a look at, at something when I was ha I had a few questions about attribution and, and he politely and re respectfully pointed out Hey Dave, your source is missing here, and this is how it should read. And I was so appreciative um, and, and grateful for that. Um, so something to watch out for when you're when you're looking at that attribution, and if you follow Tassel, you're gonna you're gonna make sure that you have that source in there. Um, one more example, and then um, I'll leave it open for for a few questions. Um, this is again what the viewer would see and this is an image that my attempt was to properly attribute and so you can see the attribution there below the image the world and i uh, memo by color light four and it this is cc by uh, nc and d and so on the um, administrative end within pressbooks you can see the two fields on the top for alternative text and caption and, and the information that I have in there. Um, and then honestly, when I was preparing for this presentation uh, and I went back in here, I realized that Pressbooks had built some new options. That advanced option with the image title attribute did not exist when I was originally putting together the work. And I'm excited to um, explore that because what I think um, is happening is is my alt, my alt text should likely be very close to what the caption should be and what I have for the caption should really be in the image title attribute and what I was doing was kind of a workaround so that the proper attribution would be seen on the screen um, but but that's not really what we want for for the caption part and so further many of you may already be familiar with this for the caption, we want um, we we want to ensure that there aren't issues if someone is reading on something that doesn't display images, uh, essentially. And for alt text, for search engine op optimization, and for accessibility, um, for screen readers, for visual Im impairment, um, those are are extremely important to have in there so things i learned along the way and clearly some more work that i need to do to ensure everything's in the right place um, uh, this is one of the last slides um, if you are working with pressbooks or you're interested in learning more this is a fantastic resource um, it, it is constantly updated um, huge thanks to the pressbooks and rebus team for putting this together um, for answering my questions um, shout out to steel and aperva um, because they've been phenomenal supporting me and answering my questions and helping me with um, trying to ensure that attributions are as smooth as they could possibly be. Okay, so I think there may be a couple minutes, um, Suzanne, for questions, if there are any in the chat. Yeah, I think we have um, about a minute or two. The first question is with your um, example from, from Lumen, who owns the copyright? Would, would it have been the author or um, or Lumen, or, or how does one find that out? I guess. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So um, I'm I'm um, <laughs> I'm going to share something that I'm not sure how uh, 
how much I'm supposed to share. It, what, what likely ordinarily happens is that in this case, the author is Lumen Learning. And when I was, um, when I was putting together the remix and combining specific names for other works, it seemed a bit odd to me that I was gonna have an attribution to a organization rather than a person or a team of people. And so I, I had both reached out to Lumen um, and, and where, where that lead took me, I ended up speaking to Linda. And so in a, in a candid conversation, my ask both to Lumen and Linda was, can you tell me who wrote the work? Because I would like to properly attribute this. And so it was um, a consensus that it was really written by Linda and that's where I wanted to attribute it. So I, I, I don't at all mean to leave Lumen out um, and certainly they are included in the source. Um, but I thought the best, um, the best uh, most accurate attribution was to Linda. Um, did that answer the question? Yes, that was very helpful. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I, and I think and, it, and from my angle, yeah. I don't expect everyone to do that, but that was that was what I thought was the the most comfortable or best thing for me to do. Yeah. And then the other question, um, and I'm going to read it because I'm not sure I follow quite. But when using applications like Rise, oh, went away. Hold on. Uh, okay. I love it when Zoom just moves the chat. There it is. Okay. When using applications like RISE, there is access to a content library of public domain images, but with no metadata. Who is responsible for attributions in this case? Um, we often, you put a caption, but can't get it, source title, et cetera. And I think, um, I think Dave, that's kind of what you were showing is if there's not a clear way to add the metadata, um, there's workarounds like putting it in the caption. Um, but yeah, there, that's not ideal if there's no place to put the metadata. Um, and that may be a time too to have content at the end of a chapter or the end of a page um, that's, that's really more text-based, even though it's technically not a, an attribution, but where you can put that, that information. Yeah, um, I think it's a great question too. So I, shortly, I think one, um, it's the author or authors or, or publisher that, that are responsible for that information. Um, and uh, in, in a few instances with my work, I have had to write the alt text or, and or the caption as, as closely as um, possible for what I think they're, they're supposed to be um, and, and learned a lot through that process along the way. Um, if you have an accessibility expert on your campus, that's that's a great way to try to get some more information. Um, on the other question, if the platform you're using doesn't have space for metadata, um, I would just put it in plain text, um, either above, uh, I think above the, the image is best, um, or below. Um, above, I think, is best for from an accessibility standpoint. Yep, and, um, and then Jenner points out for, for public domain images, we don't technically have to attribute, although it is, is nice to. So yeah, great point. Um, and I am gonna move us along because I think uh, we're in Athena's time. So Dave, if you stop sharing, I am going to move her slides along. So give me a second. Athena, are you um, ready to go? Yeah, okay, I'm so here. I can my... try sharing. I can try sharing my screen, and if I'm if it's not successful, then I'll I'll sh I'll fall back to you. That's fine. I can I can manage if you like. Or do you want to try yours? Yeah, let me try mine. Okay. Perfect. So we can we can um, see the the program, and I bet if you go to presenter view would be just fine. Yeah. Maybe one see that? Great. Yep. Okay. Hi. Um, yes, thanks once again to everyone. Um, uh, and as Dave said very aptly, there are a number of you who probably know a lot more about this than we do. Um, you know, I worked on two OERs. I'll tell you a bit more about myself, but please, uh, you know, please chime in with your expertise and, and share that with the whole group and, and me, I'd be most appreciative. 
Um, so this is a presentation on my experience working on two, uh, with two OERs using LibreTex. Uh, so I wanted to uh, tell you a bit more about LibreTex and why I chose it uh, over the other platforms. Um, so um, I've already given you an introduction about myself. I have two books that I, I worked on, two OERs that I worked on last semester, and uh, we're just finalizing them this semester and they should be ready to go uh, in the in the summer uh, but one was uh, you know uh, writing and critical thinking through literature and the other one was writing reading and college success and uh, you know we had uh, a, a number of interesting situations come about with attributions uh, so um, you know through all of this the uh, Libra Tech a founder and main person, Delmar, was extremely helpful, which brings me to why we chose Libertex. Uh, Libertex is a platform from UC Davis uh, that got a big grant uh, and it's free. It has all the tools Pressbook has as well as a bigger team. Uh, but the main reason we chose it was for the one-on-one -on -one support. The, uh, you know, there's an onboarding once a week on Tuesdays. And then, then top of that, there's office hours. And then you also have a very responsive team over email. Like I would literally ask a question and within one hour I would get a response. So uh, that was extremely helpful. And uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, very grateful to Delmar and the whole Libertex uh, 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 team for uh, helping us so much with our, our courses. Um, so, um, uh, so I just wanted to give you, uh, as I said, a, a brief overview of, of our experience using um, LibreTex and then especially the attributions process of it. Um, so uh, the kind of attributions we came across, uh, you know, obviously uh, you will know that some of them uh, already had a Creative Commons license. And so we had to just follow that format uh, for proper attributions, which I'll show you what uh, LibreTex expects. And then uh, those that did not have any copyright or licensing information, so it, uh, uh, that had a special uh, procedure. And then those that had a copyright, and but we had received permissions to use. So we had uh, to deal with these three different kinds of attributions. Um, so now the one thing is that was very helpful to me was to find out what uh, LibreTech's minimum requirements were. So. When talking to Delmar, he kind of said that he sees himself in between, like he's, you know, he, uh, he, he, for him, uh, getting the link is, is most important because um, that gives you, uh, gets you to the base of the, uh, like the source, like, so including the link is super important. And, uh, you know, while we as a team agreed, we wanted the link to the exact page where we were getting it from. Uh, he seemed okay with just even the main page uh, of the course or the um, the source we were getting the uh, text from. So, um, and then our, our LibreTex also has a meta box, the same thing that Dave was showing us with Pressbooks, and but that is on top. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. Um, with here. So for LibreTex uh, requires the name of source, link to the homepage, author, publishing uh, house or original platform, and then the license. So nothing new there. So this is how it might look. Um, and again, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, LibreTex, we had to put the source down on the bottom. We like to uh, embed all the links because we found that when we were printing out, the links would uh, you know, really mess up the uh, text. So we wanted to embed all our links within there rather than give the web links uh, separately. So, um, uh, so this is the link to the web page. And as I said, the home page is okay. And then this is the platform. And then this is the license, uh, sing information. So this is the drop down menu and this is on top. So each page after you compile all the information. So as Dave put it aptly, we just, you know, massive compilers of all this wonderful information on the web. But then we have to put in the most restrictive license on top here, because even though some of them might have a very open license, but it's the most restrictive license that determines the whole page. 
And if somebody then wants, they can go in and see which, you know, which is the, the least restrictive, most restrictive. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we have to put this uh, as, um, and show the most restrictive for the whole page. Um, then, um, so uh, there's a process for getting permissions to use content currently not part of the Creative Commons. So I actually came across a lot of very useful information on educational like university sites, because I was working on, uh, you know, a, 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 a literature course and uh, a writing composition course. And many universities had wonderful information on them. But and I and I contacted them and they were like, yes, you can use it. We don't have, uh, you know, it's free to use, but we don't have anything uh, you know, to do with Creative Commons or anything yet. But you're welcome to use it. But yes, you're still required to get official permissions, even though, you know, they've, they've uh, verbally given you um, permission. It's just that they haven't gotten on board. Uh, and those, those uh, initial tools that we saw earlier in the presentation would be a wonderful thing for, for everyone to share with, the, with these kind of uh, institutions so that they can have a licensing practice. So what do you do in that case? And then also, what do you do when you have uh, copyright uh, you have permission to use a copyright it, uh, piece of work. So uh, we came up with this permission form along with labor text to send to them. And this actually had to be linked in some way, um, you know, along with the attributions. Um, so, um, and then also Delma wanted me to mention there's a new attribution warning system. So he, he quoted and I've taken a screenshot of it. So if you wanted to, uh, use any of the material on a LibreText course, it immediately tells you what the copyright uh, is. I mean, what not, I'm sorry, not the, what the uh, uh, license is, um, you know, right a, in, in, in a pop-up. So that makes it very clear. So um, with photographs, um, um, what's different is we put the, in, in LibreText, we put the licensing inf uh, and all the information uh, directly beneath the image. So when we know the photograph, we, uh, the photographer, we definitely include that and we include who, you know, who the photograph is about. And so this would be a, a good way to attribute it. But as opposed to Pressbook, it goes directly underneath and not in the bottom section. Um, and again, if it's from a source where you don't know the photographer, but it's, uh, you know, it's uh, part of the uh, it's, it's not copyrighted. We can just link to that page and then say it's from, say, Pixabay or something. And um, for the videos, uh, ideally, you, you can link to include the link directly under the video. But as far as a lot of the videos YouTube go, sometimes you, do, you don't really know uh, where that source is. So with Libertex, they prefer not to host YouTube videos on their site. So you're actually linking to an external site, in which case it doesn't, you know, it is not uh, Libertech's responsibility to, um, to, to kind of mention, uh, find out, uh, you know, where the, the actual video is coming from. But technically on the YouTube site, they have, uh, a, a, you know, once we link to them, it's their kind of responsibility. So he hasn't been too particular about not in, about including any links for YouTube videos for that reason. Um, any questions so far? I feel I'm, I'm running along like a freight train to make sure we have enough questions at the end. Um, uh, no questions so far. Lots of great chat, uh, chatter in the chat, but no questions, so you're good to go. Okay, and excellent. So snags and how to avoid them. So for us, having that conversation with uh, Delmar from Libertex was really wonderful to find out what the minimum requirements uh, were. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, they have an extensive, uh, they're, they're very responsive and they uh, will answer anything. And I think they have an FAQ, um, um, but they're fairly new. So they are, they're getting together the guide, uh, you know, uh, getting together a guide and stuff. So uh, the other thing would, I would recommend is providing attributions as you go along. Uh, I, I was sure I knew where that source was coming back coming from but then when I actually went back I didn't remember exactly which course it was and I had to search all over again so um, you know how always have a backup and prepare for permission forms uh, not arriving on town in time 
So in addition to the main OER databases, we found Google Advanced Search uh, to be very helpful in, uh, for finding uh, content that could be shared because it has an option that allows you to search only for uh, uh, work that fits in uh, a particular license. And then we found a, uh, using a style guide really uh, important to get a certain consistency. So um, this was, we, the style guide was for the whole course, but this was for the, uh, the contributor section. <clears throat> so one, what kind of header to use, and then getting a certain format that we could then replicate. So uh, what I also found very helpful, and this is a kind of personal attribution builder, but if you know, often you find yourself drawing from the same sources again and again and again. So rather than building each page individually, I had a separate Google Sheet where I listed all the main courses I was using and correctly formatted them. And I had it open the same time I was working on the course. So I could just cut and paste very, very quickly rather than writing in each, at, you know, each, uh, each uh, um, attribution. So uh, wish list. Uh, you know, for uh, Libertex to build up this guidelines uh, page, uh, that would be really helpful. And, and I wish we had all this information before we started, uh, but we've had a wonderful experience working with it. Uh, and yeah, I, and it's very great to uh, get to know this community better. Uh, yes, uh, we can take questions. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, there was um, a really great discussion uh, uh, in the chat that I'm trying to summarize as a, as a single um, question for, for anyone that may know the answer. Um, and there's, there's some, some good answers in the chat as well, but about sources where the content goes away um, and the point was made that even if someone changes the license downstream, you can't uh, backwards revoke or whatever the, the term there is. Um, so you're okay, but how do you link to something that no longer exists as a way to prove what the original license was? Is that a, is that a good summary? And does anyone um, have a good answer and is willing to to jump up? Well, I know from my experience that some sites mention specifically, like there was an open learn site from England, which had some good material I, I pulled from. But they said specifically that their material could be pulled at any time. So they were saying, while it has this Creative Commons license now and can be shared, we cannot ensure that it will always be the case. So sometimes they say it up front. And then I don't know, you know how you are to find out when it changes. But I guess once it changes, you can't use that material anymore. You can, you, you, you can um, but it, it's hard to, to kind of have the evidence there as well. Um, and Una had a great point in the chat. Um, Quill had created a, a nice way to keep track of all the resources that, that folks are using in their own um, creation. And that way you have the link. And um, Alexis, yes, that's a great idea. Um, the Internet Ar Archive or the Wayback Machine will allow you to find Old um, old websites, and it doesn't archive everything, but it's it's been pretty helpful in the cases that I've had to use it. So yeah, keeping um, keeping a um, a record is definitely a starting point, and having it, having them all downloaded. I tend to, you know, flash drive space is pretty cheap. I tend to just download everything, um, and then at least I have a copy with of the PDF or whatever it might be um, that hopefully has the information. But yeah, that's a that's a really great um maybe a whole other webinar in fact um what do you do with with uh, sources that go away mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so i am going to um screen share again if i can find it just for a few uh, wrap-up bits of information so hopefully you can see my screen um we have webinars um as listed here that are 3 p.m eastern time unless they're they're noted otherwise we have some really great webinars coming up about um, open pedagogy, user-friendly design, um, and so on. There's, of course, Open Ed Week, where there will be lots and lots of fabulous things happening, including webinars uh, from CCC OER. If you'd like to, oh, there we go. If you'd like to stay in the loop, be sure to join our community email and um, take a look at our website. 
There's also a really great post happening in the um, EDI blog, um, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Oops, nope, not what I meant to do. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you. And we have, uh, we're, we're right at the top of the hour, but if folks have questions, um, I can hang out for just a little bit and continue some discussions. And just lastly, I want to um, thank once again our presenters. This was um, really helpful, and we appreciate um, appreciate the time you took and sharing your process and the information that you had for us. So thank you very much. Thank you.